So what you see here is the, is the oil cells boundary. And only this little portion up here north of Fort McMurray is the actual mineable oil sands. Everything else is expected to be covered in in situ uh, drilling projects sooner or later. And in fact, our project uh, was located 140 kilometers south of Fort McMurray in a very densely covered area close to, um, close to Conklin. Um, so what you see here is a network of um, temporary drilling pads, therefore um, exploring the reserve that is underlying. And um, most, of, most of these little pads, so all these little ones here, um, they're about one, se one hectare in size or a little smaller, and yeah, they're really short-lived after one month of operation. They're abandoned and they leave the forest heavily fragmented, which uh, we think is the reason why it should be reclaimed as soon as possible. Um, yeah, this is the reality how these upland sites look like. Um, there's literally no vegetation or any tree regeneration occurring. Um, there's very little done or understood about the uh, regeneration either. And um, so, mixed wood forests or boreal mixed wood forests are normally capable of uh, restoring themselves as one finds. Um, trembling asthma in them. It's a, it's a very common pioneer species that can, that can reproduce vegetatively, or so asexually, um, from their roots once the above portion of the tree is killed. Um, which makes it a key species um, for reclamation with enormous potential, I would say, as the roots can be used as propagules. So, um, for one to understand why this pro process is currently not working, I would try to explain the current um, operation of, of, of the drilling procedure and as well as the construction of a drilling pad. So it's obviously inevitable to harvest the site and to level it out. Um, well, to level it out to, to set up a drilling rig on it. However, um, as far as our knowledge is concerned, all these sites are also being stripped of their forest floor. Let's see if the animation works. Beautiful, and they're being stored off-site, where they either where the forest floor is either lost or it deteriorates due to weather. Most importantly, the whole vertical structure gets gets completely mixed by um, by stripping by stripping it off. Right. So normally cats are used to strip that off. It's a very crude figure. Um, what I'm trying to say here is that the that the forest floor is never level. So I really simplified it in in, in such a slope here. And. Um, yeah, as we know, uh, this is actually recommendation, or it is actually demanded by ERSD to receive a reclamation certificate afterwards. And only if, when that is done, the forest floor um, is stripped off, then the subsoil gets pushed down the slope into the fill site, and then we have then we have a level pad where we can set up the uh, the rig. Um, so this is what it looks like in in the soil horizon. Um, we think the current procedure uh, fails because um, the operators really strip layer by layer only the LFH or the, the, the top portion, anything that, that looks organic to them, and they too often stop it as soon as they as they hit any gray any gray horizons here, the horizon. Um, so most of the roots get sh gets chopped up. However, um, a colleague of mine. Uh, tested and proposed that the stripping should occur to the depths where the majority of aspen roots are located, where obviously the roots, um, the root systems will, in, will sort of stay intact or they will get at least salvaged to a greater, um, to a greater extent. Um, however, um, excessive depths will lead to the increased dilution of propagules, so to the roots and rhizomes. Um, so now what we propose is to actually leave the, the lower portion of the slope intact to, to not strip the forest floor and only and only strip the upper half um, as, as, deep, as deep as the roots go, therefore it will, it will get diluted, but the lower portion of the slope can stay intact. And afterwards, when the subsoil is pushed over to make the pad level, it will actually act as a buffer between, between the forest floor, the original forest floor with all the aspen roots in it, and the, the drilling rig that gets set afterwards, gets set up afterwards. Sorry. Um, 
So once the drilling rig would be removed off-site, the whole, the whole procedure can go backwards, so to say. So the recontouring of the site has to occur in order to, um, in order to uncover the original forest floor. Um, so the operators really have to uncover everything, yet they shouldn't dig in too deep, nor they should leave excessive amounts on it. And afterwards, um, the salvaged forest floor in the little box can be, can be rolled back onto the upper slope. Um, so accordingly, our primary, uh, primarily objective was to evaluate the success of the forest floor protection um, on aspen suckering. So suckering is, is the term for um, resprouting from the roots. And compare it to the, to the regular practice of um, stripping and rollback. And secondly, we wanted to test the methodology to um, to mark or to delineate the protected forest floor from the subsoil in order to make uh, make it easier for the operators to to find um, the original layer again. So that's what we came up with the study design. The, the whole the whole graphic is now kind of rotated 90 degrees. You see the the protected original forest floor over here, with now three different treatments to delineate it from the from this um, subsoil that would get pushed from here onto the fill site, whereas the, the salvaged forest floor will be stocked out here. We also uh, established a control plot without any soil disturbance, however we did harvest it just like all the other ones enable to enable the aspen uh, suckering. So now I'll show you some pictures of how that looks like. So this is a geotextile we laid it out and we would hope that it acts as a visual barrier for the operator once the, once the subsoil gets pushed on. Um, this is the freezing treatment where we hand bombed about I think 50 cubic meters of water onto a 20 by 20 plot and we really created a hard, a hard um, ice layer of about 15 centimeters so we hope that would um, create a, a physical barrier when, when the operator would scrape that site. And the no barrier treatment simply had snow on it, nothing else. Um, so um, during the construction phase we, um, we simulated the whole leveling process as well as, um, as tra uh, rig traffic. And there's much more pictures, so everyone likes pictures. Um, so this is the stripping and the stockpiling of the forest floor. The, the cat pushes, pushes the forest floor up the slope. This is to salvage the roots, so they, they dug in deeper. This is the cut site as you see it. Um, here, here the subsoil from the cut site gets pushed into the fill site uh, to, to make it level. And the cat is actually padding its way in, so it never touches the original forest floor or the, or the geotextile at all. This is the same spot now as a level pad, and we, we used, the, I think, a 30-ton rock truck to uh, compact the site. Um, this is the deconstruction of the site, where uh, the backhoe was actually fighting with the uh, geotextile. It wasn't as easy as we thought it was. And it's trying to, uh, to uncover the original forest floor that is just underneath here. Uh, in, the in the same picture, you can see the backhoe peeling off the, the rest of the subsoil and it will dump it uh, will dump it behind behind itself where the uh, where the cat will pick it up and rebuild the whole slope. So again this will be the upper slope or become the upper slope. Here's still the, the salvaged forest floor and this is the original forest floor. Um, finally um, the salvaged forest floor gets rolled back and dumped onto the cut site and we really paid attention to not to not compact it afterwards, so we only did that one rough dump and um, no slope stabilization, anything else. Um, so after the first, or within the first growing season, we took measurements to um, to evaluate the aspen sucker response, um, as well as the understory vegetation, and then we focused on principal side factors such as organic matter and uh, soil microporosity, as these influence other factors such as water balance and soil temperature and um, nutrient availability. Um, so I'll jump right into the results. This is what it looks like after, after probably three or four months. Um, you see here what the forest floor protection can accomplish versus the, the stripped and uh, rollback site, even though we salvage deeper here. Um, we found at least eight times as many, as many aspen sprouts or suckers in any of the three um, treatments compared to this site. So this figure shows the significant differences in um, sucker density as, a, as stems per hectare. 
and um, the no the no barrier treatment outperformed all the other ones with about ninety thousand stems per hectare, which is which is a, a really good number, I would say, better than even better than the control, which was only harvested and didn't uh, receive any further soil disturbance. So we weren't we were in fact I should have mentioned that earlier concerned about soil compaction because aspen does not grow well in poorly aerated soils. After seeing the results though, our concerns pretty much faded. Um, we, still, we still measured it in, in one of the treatments and compared it to the control and rollback where we couldn't, we couldn't find any significant differences. However, uh, if one looks at an undisturbed forest, so really that wasn't even harvested and compare it to the, to the control, we see that there's, there's quite, a, quite a difference there. It's not significant, but anyhow, we figured out that the harvesting does the most damage in this whole process. It's not, it's not the building the level pad. In the rollback, um, we were actually very pleased to see the, the lower bulk density as we really dumped the very rough, uh, we dumped it very roughly, right, without any form compaction. Um, not one of my best slides. So this is surface disturbance. We tried to measure it um, in two categories. One's roots exposed and the other one um, should have probably been called backhoe disturbance, so like scrapes or teeth marks that the backhoe left once it was uh, uncovering the forest floor. And we kind of get the idea that medium amounts of disturbances in the protected treatments did not really harm the, um, the suckering response. However, uh, amounts, amounts close to 100%, especially for root exposure, uh, proved to be detrimental for the, for the asthma suckering. It was also correlated, um, yeah. Root exposure was <coughs> negatively correlated to aspen sac response. Um, I excluded the green bar actually in the in the rollback treatment as there was no <coughs> forest floor in place. It was so mixed up. And since slash cover or um, since slash and other woody debris um, can inhibit suckering by either acting as a physical barrier or decreasing soil temperature, uh, we compared. We compared the covers among the treatments. Um, we see that the no barrier treatment, which performed best in the suckering, uh, had lower amounts, much lower amounts of slash than the control. Um, so if we would exclude the rollback treatment from, from this analysis, we did, find a, we did find a trend that with increasing slash cover, the sucker density decreased. Um, we also measured uh, soil temperature, which uh, had a very strong um, where slash cover did have a very strong effect on soil temperature, and we think uh, that soil temperature decreases, or with de decreasing soil temperature, sucker density will decrease too, as less um, sucker hormones get synthesized with lower temperatures. <clears throat> so our conclusions are that the protected forest floors are much better than rollback sites. They perform very, very well. Um, with snow on the ground last winter, um, no further barriers such as icing in or um, the claws were actually needed. Not only the tree regeneration, but the understory regeneration was more than satisfying. We found about 45 different understory species in all of the protected treatments. There was lots of native understory, if I remember correctly. And even though, even though the rollback treatment was lagging so far behind, it was still an improvement to the standard uh, business as usual practice as we compared it to uh, operational sites which had about 100 stems per hectare, whereas our rollback treatment with the increased depth salvage had about 9,000 stems. Um, and the end of it all, it boils down to that you do need a very skilled and motivated operator to uh, carry out um, this process. And I want to thank all my colleagues, partners, and supervisors, as well as Devon Energy and NSERC for funding. And thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>